Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Sonar Fishing, and today we're gonna to be talking about the five best situations to throw a spinnerbait. All right guys, so thank you for joining me again for another edition of Sonar Fishing. Uh, today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite uh, reaction baits that kind of fell out of favor, you know, probably about 10 years ago, and I've just started really getting back into it, and that is the spinner bait. This right here is the Z Man Sling Blades. Uh, when Z Man introduced this, this is actually the bait that kind of got me back into spinner bait fishing because I always struggled finding a spinner bait that had all the right qualities. This one is, is phenomenal. It's got a, a real premium hand tied skirt. It just looks really good, really good blade combinations. It's made of a, a, a steel that is very strong, but also has a lot of vibration. Uh, and, uh, and just overall, you know, it's got a strong hook, good keeper, that sort of thing. Stable track head, which is really important for keeping this bait like this instead of rolling on its side. Uh, it's just a really good quality spinner bait overall, and so my, my boxes are absolutely full of it. And I've caught a lot of fish. In fact, my best um, uh, tournament on the pro circuit, my, my best finish was a third place finish at Grand Lake and I caught all of my fish, all my way fish on a uh, sling blade spinner bait. I customized it a little bit with a different blade. But anyways, I wanted to talk about the five best situations, at least in my opinion, for fishing a spinner bait because a lot of, of other baits, like the chatterbait, started taking over um, you know, a lot of the different situations where you used to throw a spinnerbait. So a lot of the shallow water power fishing uh, you know, situations where a spinnerbait was kind of the, the go-to, now have been taken over by, by chatterbaits. But there's still a lot of different uh, you know, t uh, situations where a spinnerbait is definitely going to be one of your, your best choices. So let's start off with number one. So the first situation that I really think that spinner baits are a really big deal and, and super important tool is bluffy banks and 45 degree banks. So those those steeper banks that have you know some type of cover on them. So it could be you know a lay down tree or you know even just where a part of the the bluff wall just broke off and created a, you know a, a kind of a rock pile there uh, whatever type of cover you have on these steeper banks what i discovered over the last couple of years and especially this year i was fishing a tournament at dale hollow and um you know i don't like throwing the alabama rig i haven't been throwing it all that much over the years because we can't throw it on the on the pro circuit but i was fishing a toyota series where you could throw it I didn't even have an Alabama rig in the boat, which is, you know, my bad. I should be using every tool that I have at my disposal. Uh, and I started finding fish on these these steeper banks, and it just dawned on me. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, a spinner bait is essentially the original Alabama rig. You know, it imitates with these blades, uh, a small school of bait fish. It really does do a lot of what a Alabama rig does on a smaller scale. And so I picked that up and really just started slow rolling it around the cover. And what I discovered is, number one, the, the spinner bait goes through the cover way better than an Alabama rig could ever do. And I was able to get more bites than a lot of guys that were also throwing the, uh, the, the Alabama rig in the same type of scenario. And so slow rolling spinner baits around bluff and 45 degree banks that have some type of lay down on them is, is absolutely one of the places that a spinner bait is gonna excel. Um, that second day of the tournament when I figured out the, the spinner bait bite, I caught my limit, my five fish limit, before the last angler had blasted off that morning. And it wasn't like I was an early boat draw. I think I was like 90 something, something like that. But I caught my, my, my limit fish. I didn't even catch a limit all day the first day. But the second day I caught my limit before the last boat uh, went past me. So it just goes to show you that type of scenario can work very, very well. And usually when I'm, I'm fishing it on these steeper bluffy banks uh, and also those 45 degree banks, it's usually you know in the pre-spawn period. That's where I really think that this, this bait excels. So slow rolling it in those areas uh, can produce a lot of really, really good catches. All right, number two. 
One of my favorite situations that I, I was presented with in Florida when I was living down there in fishing spinnerbaits, and spinnerbaits are really good in Florida, especially for big, big fish. Um, and that's something that not a lot of people talk about, but spinnerbaits in Florida are legit. Think back to like 2006 when Rick Klun caught that like 11 pounder on Toho. The biggest fish I've ever hooked in my life in Florida uh, was, was in Toho on a spinnerbait. Didn't catch it, didn't land it, but it was ginormous. It was, it was massive. But, um, you know, in those situations, obviously a chatterbait does really, really good when you're fishing in the grass, you know, in the thick stuff. It, it, you're way better off throwing a chatterbait if you're casting in a grass flat or something like that where you've got grass everywhere. However, if you've got a very, very defined grass line um, where, you know, the grass just stop, stops abruptly, like here on the Tennessee River, you've got a river channel and the grass grows to the river channel and then just stops like a wall. A spinnerbait is a really, really good option for that scenario. Um, I, I was just doing it recently at Gunnersville, worked really well there. And so fishing defined grass lines is a really, really good scenario for throwing a spinnerbait. Number three, fishing around submerged brush and bushes. That is one of the, the situations that a spinnerbait still excels at over all others. You know, a chatterbait can do well in that scenario too. However, a chatterbait tends to snag a lot. You know, it's really not good for brush or, you know, flooded bushes or hard cover in general. It does tend to snag a lot more in those scenarios. Now grass, that is a chatterbait's domain. But when it comes to brush and hard cover, a spinnerbait is way more effective and efficient because it can go through that cover very, very easily. So there, th this is kind of in, it, it divided into two different scenarios. So first off, you've got like flooded bushes and stuff like that. If you've got some high water situation, you've got a lot of flooded bushes or lay down trees or something like that. Spinnerbait's really good for shallow water power fishing but a spinnerbait also excels out deep for brush piles. So, and when I say deep, I'm not talking about like super, super deep. I'm talking about, you know, 12, you know, 10 to, to 15 feet, I'd say is the sweet, the sweet spot for spinnerbait fishing offshore. But like lakes like uh, Lake Eufaula, for instance, I'm going there for my first Bassmaster Open this year. Brush piles are for sure gonna be a big deal. And one of the best techniques for catching them, you know, on that lake specifically, uh, is a spinnerbait. Slow rolling it over the tops of those brush piles. Again, it's way better than, than a lot of the different reaction baits because you can actually work it through those brush piles without snagging. And, uh, and so a spinnerbait works very, very well in both shallow and deep uh, brush and, and hard cover. All right, number four, smallmouth fishing up north. So one of the crazy things about, about fishing for smallmouth is that a lot of the, the things that are in the bass fishing textbook, handbook, uh, are completely null and void when you start fishing for smallmouth because uh, they tend to, to love bright, gaudy baits like this, white and chartreuse, chartreuse blades. These aren't, you know, I usually change out these blades for, you know, chartreuse or white. Um, you know, when I'm fishing for smallmouth, but they love those really, really gaudy colors up there. They're just a totally different animal. And, uh, and that goes for even, you know, real clear water. Like if I'm fishing for largemouth or even spots, I like dirty water before I start throwing, you know, colors like white and chartreuse or something like that. But smallmouth, completely different. Going up north, um, spinnerbaits are one of the best uh, reaction baits for certain periods of time during the, the, the spring and summer months where you can just burn this bait as fast as you can on the surface and big smallmouth just absolutely destroy it. And again, you're using these big gaudy, you know, bright colors uh, and you're just working it as fast as you can. Usually I'll throw like a three quarter ounce with um, willow leaf blades and just move it very, very quickly, as quickly as I can on the surface without it, you know, the blades coming out of the water and uh, you catch a lot of fish on it. You also miss a lot of fish, so make sure that you put a trailer hook on there. Hayabusa makes a really good trailer hook system that uh, I love, but make sure if you're fishing for smallmouth, you put that trailer hook on there. And really, you should put the trailer hook on all the time when you're fishing with a spinnerbait. But 
the number four scenario that I love throwing a spinnerbait is definitely fishing for smallmouth in clear water up north. All right, number five. Now we're talking about a very specific window of time during the year that a spinnerbait really does uh, excel, and that is during the shad spawn. Of course, the shad spawn varies all across from lake to lake, region to region, um, but when you have shad actively spawning, you, it's obvious to see if you're anywhere around any type of wood cover or like rocky riprap bank or anything like that, you're gonna see a lot of shad you know, flickering on the surface. Uh, that means that they're spawning. And a spinnerbait does a really, really good job, obviously, as we already talked about, of imitating um, you know, a school of bait fish. And so because of that, it is really, really good to throw for, for all different types of shad spawn in all different types of areas. And the great thing is you can throw it in any type of cover that the fish are spawning around. And so, uh, you know, at, at Pickwick this year, or this last year, uh, a spinnerbait was a really big deal for a lot of guys. Uh, I got in on the shad spawn thing a little bit late because I was, I was busy having fun flipping, doing my thing in the back of a creek. But uh, I got clued into the shad spawn thing a little bit late, and, uh, and the spinnerbait was definitely a big player for the guys that did catch on to that uh, a lot earlier. But I've been in a lot of different scenarios, situations, and tournaments that a spinnerbait is, is an absolute killer above other baits that are very, very similar that are good shad imitators. And I think it is because you've got the, uh, those, those extra blades that kind of imitate a ball of shad as opposed to just one singular shad. All right, guys, so those are my five favorite scenarios to throw a spinnerbait. Obviously, spinnerbaits work in a wide variety of situations beyond this, this list of five, but those are by far my five favorite situations. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you drop a comment below, and also if you're interested in buying the uh, Z-Man sling blades or you know the, uh, the trailer hook system that I just mentioned, make sure that you check out 44tackle.com. I'm not sure they have the trailer hooks, but they definitely have the Z-Man sling blades, so I'm gonna drop a link in the description. And if you buy using that link, you'll not only get 10% off, but you, you uh, kick back a little bit to me to support this channel. So I would really appreciate it if you use that link. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm gonna see you on the next video and out on the water.